Isn't he a great story that it is? I mean, he's just one of those guys that uh, continues to be resilient, to find a way to perform well uh, on the big stage. What's going on, guys? Rob Pizzo here. Very pleased to be alongside the three-time Olympic gold medalist and now broadcaster for Sportsnet, Jennifer Botterell. Jennifer, thanks so much for doing this with us. My pleasure. Okay, we're going to talk a lot about different aspects of the playoffs in just a few minutes, but... I do want to ask you about your new career because most people in the hockey world, they know Jennifer Botterill. They know her as the hockey player, the multiple gold medal winner, the future Hall of Famer. Uh, But now they're getting to see you on a regular basis as the broadcaster. Uh, Talk to me a little bit about that transition. Are you enjoying it? Well, well, thank you. And I have, have absolutely loved the opportunity. And it's been a chance to stay very connected to the game and to the sport, but in a different capacity. And did I love my time as a competitive athlete? Absolutely, I love my days playing. But this has also been just a really nice change of pace and to hopefully provide some valuable insight and to share my perspective on the game and how I see things developing on the ice. It's been uh, just such a nice opportunity to share that uh, with viewers, with fans of the game, and, and to be surrounded by by other great people who also appreciate the sport of hockey has been, uh, again, just something that I'm really grateful for and something that I have uh, really been enjoying. Okay, let's get into the playoffs. North Division, we've never seen anything like this. We're guaranteed to see a Canadian team in the Final Four. Uh, What have you thought about the North Division this year? Just the storylines that have come out of it. Have you enjoyed it? And who's the team you're really keeping your eye on right now? Yes. Well, all season, the North Division has been so great for excitement level uh, in terms of following these Canadian teams with with high-end forward talent uh, to great goaltending and and just solid defense. So as a whole, I think it's been quite captivating to follow. And now uh, we're in the, the, the... the most exciting part of the season with playoffs. So if I think there's been a lot of great moments across the board uh, in our country, but I think for the team that's probably caught my eye, it, it might be the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think there's just been an interesting dynamic with that team that Matthews and Marner have been so exceptional. But you also talk about some of the chemistry now that Tavares and Nylander have found. Um, but you have to also mention all that veteran experience. And you have Thornton that's come in and and all the players, you talk about Matthews or Marner, any of the guys, they're more excited when Thornton or Spezza get points than they are when they each get their own goals or assists. And I think that says a lot about the, the character in the room, uh, you know, and what Simmons has added in terms of, of that grit to the team, but also the personalities that we've seen. Okay, I want to jump off the ice for a second because uh, I, like many people, have been sitting down watching every game. And uh, right before puck drop, of Carolina, Nashville, uh, my wife walked in and she looked at the TV and saw all of those fans in the stands and audibly gasped when she saw it. And uh, yeah, we've become so accustomed now to no fans in the stands, even though it's only been about a year that we've been seeing that. Uh, I'm wondering about the competitive advantage that kind of gives teams like Carolina and teams like Vegas. They can have fans in the stands, whereas you know, the Torontos and the Edmontons of the world are still playing to that empty arena. Uh, any kind of competitive advantage for them there? I think it's fair to say it'd be a, a slight advantage uh, that of course, I mean, all of these guys, all of these players are used to playing in front of almost 20,000 people uh, on a nightly basis, let alone the playoffs where the intensity and the energy and the hype uh, is there. So. I think many people have the same reaction to see some of these crowds say, oh, wow, right, we, we miss that. Um, but I also think it's something that these teams in the North Division aren't going to spend a lot of time focusing on or being concerned about, that they understand the reality of the environments that they're in and they're focused and they've become accustomed to the environment that they've had throughout the season. And they will have the capacity to bring their own intensity uh, in terms of these big playoff moments. But uh, yes, I think it's fair to say that some of these teams with with uh, thousands of people in the stands is a nice little added added bonus. But I think as a player, as an athlete, you still have to maintain your focus on your task and your performance. And, and these guys, I think all the teams in the North Division will still have the ability to bring that. 
Well, it seems like every year in the playoffs, there's one player that we completely have counted out, and then he goes out on the ice and raises his hand and says, hey guys, remember me? And uh, I think this year that player is Mark andre Fleury. Isn't he a great story? That it is. I mean, he's just one of those guys that uh, continues to be resilient, to find a way to perform well uh, on the big stage and under these, these moments. Uh, and I think what else is, is very telling is in terms of the kind of guy that he is. I mean, Colby Armstrong did an interview with Sidney Crosby, uh, you know, and he just, and they were talking about Marc-Andre Fleury and, and what a, a great friend, what a great teammate he was, um, was Crosby's quote. But then they started talking about how much he loved dessert, right? And so they talked about how, just, but they were laughing and smiling and talking about him, about what a, an amazing athlete he is, but also that, that character and that personality that, that he brings. And that's why I think his story and his performances continue to be so captivating for everyone. Jennifer, I don't know if you're in a playoff pool, but I'm in quite a few. And uh, one of the first players I picked was Nikita Kucherov. We've seen what this guy can do in the playoffs, but it seems like every time you look at what people are talking about in regards to Nikita Kucherov, it's Tampa Bay's way of, I don't want to necessarily call it cap circumvention because they didn't really break any rules, but getting around the salary cap this year. You have any thoughts on that? If you look at it from an organization's standpoint, if you're the Tampa Bay Lightning, of course, if you're the executive team, the management team, the coaching staff, or the players, each of you is trying to do your role to the best of your capacity, right? To the, you know, your ultimate potential. And so for them, if they've found a way, whether it's a creative way, and, and perhaps people don't agree with it, but right now it, it has worked underneath sort of all of the, the rule books. And so for them, they've found a way and, and here he's back and, and performing really well. So it's something for the NHL that they need to evaluate um, in terms of if they need to make adjustments, if they're not happy how it went. But if you're a fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning, you feel like they've done an exceptional job of creating this platform and doing sort of doing everything they could to make sure that this team was the best that they could be for a playoff run. They've done that. All right, Jennifer, I'm putting you on the spot. Who's your Stanley Cup winner? I did have to put in my predictions. Uh, so I, I put Colorado there that uh, just in terms of, of their offensive depth, they have Makar on the back end. He's, I mean, one of the best defensemen in the league. So in terms of, again, their offensive talent, uh, along with, with that on the blue line, uh, I think they're a pretty exciting team to watch. Jennifer, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, really appreciate it. Keep up the great work on TV and enjoy the playoffs. Well, great. Thanks. Always nice to chat with you. Thank you.